Namaste and a very, very good morning to all of you. My name is Mithun and in today's presentation, I will be talking about healthcare analytics. Specifically, we'll be looking at three steps to perform EDA in healthcare sector. Now to show you the EDA steps that we perform, I will be using a file which is called as drug treatment. To access this particular file, I will click on the file menu, choose recently used data, and here the very first file is drug treatment file. The moment I click on the drug treatment file, SPSS gets populated, and as you can see here, this is the file that I will be working on to demonstrate EDA in healthcare data. What is this data set about? You had patients who suffered from the same illness and they were given different types of drugs. We have information about what is the patient's age, what is the sodium con concentration in the, in the blood sample, what is the potassium concentration in the blood sample of the patient, the gender of the patient, the BP level, the cholesterol level, and finally, the drug which they responded to. For example, if you look at the first patient, she's a female whose age is 23 years. Her sodium concentration is 0.79. The potassium concentration in her blood sample is 0 0.03. She has high BP and high cholesterol, and she responded to drug Y. If I scroll down, you can understand what is the sample size in this data set. The sample size is 200. This data set is just a fact table. I will not be able to make any important conclusion looking at this data set. One of the most important thing that you need to ask yourself is, when somebody gives a data set, ask yourself a simple question. Does this data set tell me a story? Are there any important insights that I can pull out from the data? To pull out important insights from the data, we can do what is called as EDA or exploratory data analysis. And in this video, in three steps, I will be showing you three different techniques. The first technique is what is called as distribution analysis. Distribution analysis is done for a categorical variable. The variable drug is a categorical variable. This is the prescription drug. I will be doing a distribution analysis for this particular variable. How to perform a distribution analysis? You can see here the graphs menu in SPSS. I will click on the graphs menu. The first option here is what is called as chart builder. Let me click on chart builder. At the left-hand side top corner, you can see all the variables that are present in the data set. At the bottom left-hand side corner, you can see the different graphs that SPSS offers. We have bar chart, line chart, area, so on and so forth. I will choose a simple bar chart, drag it and drop it to the canvas at the top. SPSS asks me to provide the x-axis and the y-axis. This variable drug is very important for our analysis. I will drag this and drop it to the x-axis. This is just a preview. This is not the actual chart. Once I've made this selection, I will choose OK. In the output window, you can see SPSS displays the bar chart. What does this bar chart tell me? This bar chart simply tells me that the drug which people most responded to was drug Y and X. The drug which people least responded to was drug C. Can I do any modification to this chart? Can I change the display of this particular chart? There are two things which I want to do with this particular chart. I want to display a horizontal bar chart and I want to change the color of the bar chart from blue to red. How do you do this? 
to change the color of the bar chart, you can double click on the bar chart. Once you double click on the bar chart, the chart editor, as you can see here, the chart editor window opens up. You can select on any of the bars, right click on the bar, and then choose the very first item, properties window. In the properties dialog box, I will choose fill and border. Here you can see different colors SPSS offers. I will choose the red color and then click on the option apply. Once I click on the option apply, you can see the bar chart now changes color to red. Let me click on close. This is how using the properties window in SPSS, you can edit the chart. The second thing that I want to do is, I want to look at a horizontal bar chart. Right now, what you're seeing is a vertical bar chart. Question is, can I turn this into a horizontal bar chart? To change this into a horizontal bar chart, what we can do is click on the transpose icon. As you can see here, this is the transpose icon. And the moment I bring the cursor to the transpose icon, SPSS gives a message transpose chart coordinate system. Please click on the transpose chart and you can see here a horizontal bar chart being displayed. Let me close this window and you will be able to see a different view to your bar chart. So this is how we can do a distribution analysis to see which is the most effective drug and which is the least effective drug. From this bar chart, I can say the most effective drug is drug Y and the least effective drug is drug C. With this, I will go back to the data set. This is the original data set that I had. As step two, I want to analyze two variables. Both these are scale variables, that is sodium concentration in the blood sample of the patient and potassium concentration in the blood sample of a patient. Is there any relationship between these two variables? When you want to study relationship between two scale variables, we have to construct a scatter plot. So moving on to step two, how do we construct a scatter plot? To construct a scatter plot, I will be clicking on the graphs menu, then choose the very first option, chart builder. The old settings are still visible. So let me reset everything. Now, once you reset this, this is fresh and we can now go ahead with a scatter chart. You can see here, Scatter chart, please click on the option scatter. There are different types of scatter plot that SPSS displays. The first one is what is called as a simple scatter. Second is simple scatter with a fit line. The third option here is a group scatter. Let me drag and drop grouped scatter into the canvas on the top. Once I drag and drop the simple scatter, what you'll see is the y-axis and x-axis. I have not specified what variable will go along the y-axis. So what I'll choose here is the variable potassium. Potassium variable will be along the y-axis. I will choose the variable sodium along the x-axis. So this will give me the distribution of potassium concentration in blood versus the sodium concentration in the blood sample of a patient. At the top right-hand side corner, you see an option which says set color. I can color each of these data points with respect to a particular variable. I will choose the variable drug, drag this and drop it to set color. Once this is done, I will click on the option OK. SPSS produces a scatter plot, and this is how the scatter plot appears. As you can see here, 
the potassium concentration is along the y axis the sodium concentration is along the x axis you can see the legend here the blue color circles correspond to drug a the red color corresponds to drug b green corresponds to drug c orange corresponds to drug x and yellow color circles correspond to drug y what do you see when you look at this particular chart you see a lot of yellow colored dots here and above a particular threshold you see multiple colors but no yellow color this is a very very interesting chart because this gives me an idea that there is a threshold of sodium to potassium concentration beyond which above which the drug could be any of the four drugs drug a drug b drug c or drug x and below this particular threshold the drug that patients respond to will always be drug y what is that optimal threshold that is still not clear but it is quite clear that you have a prominent region here in this space where you can only see yellow colored circles indicating that there is a specific threshold above which you can always suggest drug y which is that threshold that is still not clear now can i do a deep dive into this graph to do a deep dive what i will do is i will double click on the scatter plot and then produce quadrants how do you produce the quadrants as you can see here when you bring the cursor close to this particular icon it says add a reference line to the x axis so this will produce a reference line to the x axis i also want a reference line along the y axis so this will produce a reference line to the y axis let me close this particular window and look at the scatter plot again this is very very interesting now what this reference line has done is it has divided the region into four boxes this is the first box wherein you see small values for sodium as well as potassium at the other extreme you see another quadrant or box wherein you see high concentration of sodium and potassium in the blood sample of the patient you see another quadrant here wherein you see high concentration of sodium but low concentration of potassium you see the next quadrant in this region wherein you see high concentration of potassium but low concentration of sodium there are a lot of important messages that i can draw from this kind of quadrant analysis firstly when you look at this particular quadrant this is a very very interesting quadrant and you can see only yellow colored circle and yellow colored circles correspond to drug y which means that when the patient's sodium concentration in the blood sample exceeds 0.7 and it is less than 0.05 patients always respond to only one drug that is drug y so next time a new patient comes and you take his blood sample if you find that his sodium concentration is greater than 0.7 and less than and his potassium concentration is less than 0.05 you can go ahead and suggest drug y look at this particular quadrant this is a quadrant wherein you see low concentration of sodium as well as low concentration of potassium the concentration of sodium is less than 0.7 the concentration of potassium is less than 0.05 you see multiple colors which means people may respond to any of these five drugs but you see a domination of yellow colored circles indicating that here again mostly people may respond to drug y 
but in addition to drug y you might want to try any of the other drugs as well let's look at this particular quadrant the quadrant 3 i'm calling this as quadrant 1 this is quadrant 2 we saw that people in quadrant 2 mostly responded to drug y let's now move on to quadrant 3 this is a quadrant wherein you see high concentration of sodium as well as high concentration of potassium and you see multiple colors here the number of yellow colored circles here reduces and you see a domination of other circles indicating that people may respond to any of the drugs like drug a drug b drug c drug x sometimes they may also respond to drug y it is not very conclusive as to which one drug you need to suggest for people belonging to this particular quadrant let's look at the last quadrant here what is really conspicuous and interesting here is that you see multiple colors except the color yellow indicating that people in this quadrant patients who fall in this quadrant that is high potassium concentration in blood but low sodium concentration in the blood they may respond to any of the four drugs but they don't respond to drug y i repeat people in this quadrant may respond to any of the four drugs like drug a b c or x but they do not respond to drug y to just summarize what is the inference of this chart i can clearly see here that people belonging to this quadrant may respond to drug y or any of the other drugs but predominantly drug y people in this quadrant which is the second quadrant only respond to drug y and no other drug when you move to quadrant 3 you see people may predominantly respond to one of the four drugs namely drug a b c or x but they don't respond to drug y and people within the four quad fourth quadrant may respond to any of the four uh, drugs like a b c or x but they certainly don't respond to drug y now this particular chart tells me another important thing that is we need to identify a proper threshold a precise threshold beyond which i can say people always respond to drug y below which people may respond to any other drug the question is how do i arrive at that particular threshold as you can see here i have got two variables one potassium second sodium is there a way in which i can derive a new variable which is a combination of these two variables here i am talking about feature engineering how do we engineer new features in spss this is where i move on to step 3 let me come back to the data editor window using these two variables i am going to create a new variable next to drug which will represent the ratio between sodium and potassium to create this variable there is a option called as compute variable let me click on the transform menu the very first option here is compute variable once you click on the compute variable a new dialog box opens up here you have to specify the target variable the target variable here will be sodium underscore potassium this is the new variable which i will be deriving what is the numerical expression i will be taking sodium let me click on this particular arrow put the division symbol and then use the potassium as the denominator so this is a very simple calculation wherein i am taking the ratio between sodium and potassium and i am naming this particular variable as sodium underscore potassium let me click on the option okay once you click on the option okay in the output window you don't see much let me go back to the data 
editor window, you can see here what SPSS has done. SPSS has simply divided 0 0.79 and 0 0.03, and it has created a new variable called as sodium to potassium ratio. And for the first patient, the sodium to potassium ratio is 25.35. For the second patient, it is 13.09. For the third patient, it is 10 point something. And as I scroll down, you can see the new variable has been created for each and every patient. Now, the question is, using the variable sodium to potassium ratio, can I find out the optimal value of sodium to potassium ratio and suggest what is the drug that I need to administer to a new patient in future. To find out this optimal value, I will be performing what is called as a histogram. To construct a histogram, what I will do is I will click on the graphs option. The very first option here is chart builder. Let me click on the chart builder. A new dialog box opens. As you can see here, the old settings for the scatter bot, for the scatter plot are still visible. Let me reset this entire graph. Here, I am not going to be using a scatter plot. I will be choosing what is called as a histogram. I want to choose a histogram in this particular analysis. Again, you see four different types of histogram. The first one is a simple histogram. The second one is what is called as a stacked histogram. I will be choosing the stacked histogram. So let me drag this and drop the variable stacked histogram. Here, SPSS expects me to specify the y-axis and the x-axis. I will choose the new ratio variable, that is sodium to potassium ratio, and drag this and drop it along the x-axis. One more thing that I wish to do here is you see a box which says set color. I want to color the histogram based on the five different drug types. So this will produce a stacked histogram. With this selection, let me choose the option OK. In the output window, SPSS produces the stacked histogram. As you can see here, in the x-axis, what you are seeing here is sodium to potassium ratio. And in the y-axis, you are able to see the frequency. Histogram produces a frequency distribution. And there are different colors here that SPSS displays. For each of the drugs, what is the average sodium to potassium ratio that is being displayed for all the five drugs? My first impression when I look at the description here is for drug A, the average value is 10.9. For drug B, it is slightly higher, which is 11.5. For drug C, the average sodium to potassium ratio is lesser than that of drug B. Let's look at drug X, it is 10 point something. So for the first four drugs, that is drug A, drug B, and drug C, the average of sodium to potassium ratio is around 10 point something. But what is really, really interesting here is drug Y. Look at the mean value here. The mean value is 22.37, which means that the average sodium to potassium ratio for a patient who has responded to drug Y is 22, which is almost twice that of the next best, which is drug B. So the sodium to potassium ratio in blood is very, very high if you have responded to drug Y. The next very, very important statistic that I'd like to draw your attention to is standard deviation. Look at the numbers here. For drug A, it is two point something. Drug B, it is one point something. Drug C, two point something. 
drug X, it is two point something. Drug Y, it is six. Now, this tells me a lot of things about the patient's sodium to potassium blood concentration. It simply tells me that the variation in the sodium to potassium blood concentration is very, very high. The ratio variable is very, very high because the standard deviation is six point something. So for drug Y, there is more variation. Also, the average value of sodium to potassium ratio is also very, very high. Let me pay attention to this particular graph now. You can see here a lot of yellow colored bars and yellow colored bars correspond to drug Y. So round about the region of 14 point something, that is when the sodium to potassium ratio is 14.8, people always respond to drug Y because you see only one particular color here. And what happens when the patient's sodium to potassium ratio is less than 14.8, people may respond to any of the four drugs like drug A, drug B, C, or X, but they don't respond to drug Y. So this is the conclusion that I can draw from stack histogram. So this is how simple EDA, exploratory data analysis, can throw up a lot of useful insights about the data. To just quickly summarize what we have done in this video, we first looked at the distribution of different graphs. Once we check the distribution of different graphs, we proceeded to do a scatter plot. Further, we were able to break down the scatter plot into four different quadrants, and we were able to identify what is the profile of sodium to potassium ratio for each of these four groups of people. Based on the information of the scatter plot, we moved to a stacked histogram. And based on the stacked histogram, we were able to identify the optimal value of sodium to potassium ratio above which people always responded to drug Y, below which people never respond to drug Y. If you are a medical researcher, next time you, uh, next time you look at the blood sample of a patient, you have to pull out the numbers for sodium concentration in the blood, potassium concentration in the blood, take a simple ratio, and if that ratio exceeds 14.86, you can prescribe drug Y. If that ratio for a patient is less than 14.8, you need not specify drug Y. With this, I have come to the end of today's presentation. If you have liked this particular presentation, I request you to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching today's presentation. Have a great day.